What is going on my friends out there? Welcome to Gamers with Gains and this is my post New York Comic Con 2015 thoughts, impressions, and a little bit of talk with you guys for some of the things that I saw while I was up in New York recently. Now I was there for a good number of days, about four or five days, about four days for the actual convention where I got to see a lot of great things, got to talk to a lot of great people, and got to play a lot of great games that were on display there, both in and outside of the actual convention. Now, the first day that I got over there, I arrived very early in the morning, had a very early flight, but it was a day prior to the convention starting, but I also had a chance to go over and check out some of the displays that some of the publishers that were attending the convention had there for the press people to actually check out. Now, I went to some appointments with uh, publishers like Square Enix, as well as also EA, where they had their fall lineup on display from not only coming out this November, but onward into next year, in the first like quarter of next year, which is very cool. With Square Enix, I got a chance to check out games like Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Hitman, Rise of the Tomb Raider, as well as also Just Cause 3. With EA, they had games such as Star Wars Battlefront, even though I got a chance to play the actual beta prior to the game coming out, as well as also Unraveled and Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which I thought was very cool. But with that being said, guys, because I'm going to talk about some of the other games that I saw inside the convention, some of the other things I did, you can find a lot of these different previews that I did for thecoalition.com in the description box below for you guys to check out and actually read up and see what I thought about some of the games that I actually saw there on display and some of the games I actually got to play, which was great. But during the course of the convention, I got to see a lot of great people, got to talk to a lot of great friends and colleagues of mine from throughout the industry. A lot of YouTubers that were actually showing up there that were based out of New York, or even some of them that were actually flying in to, to New York from different parts of the United States. I got a chance to see Glitch X City from uh, YouTube over there. That This was her first New York Comic Con, her first time in New York ever, which was very cool. I got to hang out with her in Times Square, actually hang out with everybody else. I got to see Skyward Wing, which was very cool. Great to actually meet him in person after writing about him and the rest of the Key Keepers. That was very Really cool. And I got to see a bunch of other Poke YouTubers that were all over the place, as well as also a couple guys that were scattered around throughout the entirety of New York Comic Con. So again, even though I didn't probably didn't mention your name here, it was really awesome to meet you guys out there. Really thank you for actually come, taking the time to actually say hello, actually, you know, hang out for a little bit. It was really awesome seeing all of you. I hope I get to see a lot of you guys at PAX East, because I'm really planning to go to PAX East this coming year, so that should be awesome. But Besides all that, I got to see a lot of industry people. I got to meet a couple guys from IGN and IGN Movies. Scott Cholera, Ed, Ed, uh, was it Eric Goldman. You guys were awesome. It was great talk chatting it up with you all. Uh, I got to see JVB from the Post Game Report, PGR. I got to talk to, obviously, Hip Hop Gamer from HipHopGamerShow.com. It was great to talk with him uh, for a little while, you know, about random stuff in games. We got to see each other at a bunch of different appointments that we actually went to, including Square Enix, EA, and just hung out and had a lot of fun while we were getting all our work done, which is very cool. Also, a couple cool, neat, interesting people I got to meet, including Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman from Batman the Animated Series. I got an autograph and a picture with him, which was awesome. That blew my mind. I had no idea I was actually going to be able to get something like that, which was very, very cool. And hopefully one day I'll show you guys because I want to do a video about Batman the Animated Series at some point. Besides that, I had a chance to also talk to Troy Baker, who... Conveniently enough, we had an appointment with the Coalition to actually go check out some of his new work that he was doing on the new Lego uh, DC Superheroes movie, which was interesting. He's voicing Batman in that movie. We got a chance to chat it up with him for a little bit to see, you know, what he's been up to and talk about voice acting in general. But you can find that interview on the Coalition YouTube channel, which is very interesting. I was actually behind the camera for this one, but while Dana, who was one of our content writers, actually had a chance to speak with him directly. And it was very cool, some insight, but we got a chance to talk a little bit afterwards, and it was great, you know, great guy. Got some really fine hair <laughs> I have to say but with that being said talked to a whole bunch of other guys over there I got to meet uh, was it Raina Scully I got to meet uh, a whole bunch of other like different cosplayers that I've seen you know throughout you know the years and such very very awesome but let's talk about some of the other games I got to see some of the different booths that they had there. They had Bandai, Namco, Capcom, Square Enix, and then they also had a little thing for Nintendo over in the bottom floor area for Yokai Watch. That was an interesting game for me to actually check out because not only did I get a chance to play the game fully with a whole on demo, but I also got a chance to check out the new anime series that is being based off of it, as well as also the manga series and all the different toys and collectibles that they're trying to push with the game. The game itself is very, very interesting. Again, you can find a preview that I did for the game down in the description box below over on the cold Coalition.com, which details all the different types of aspects about it that, you know, some of the different types of gameplay elements and a lot of the comparisons that not only myself, but other people will
will draw to the Pokemon series. But don't be afraid, this game is completely original and completely different than what's established in Pokemon. And in my opinion, in some aspects of it, does it a little bit better than others. I know I went to go check out the actual demo with Glitch, and she actually said the same thing, like, you know, she loved the, the map layout and such of the actual game. And that's someone who, like, really plays Pokemon hardcore, so it was pretty awesome checking out that game. Besides that, got a chance to play Sword Art Online, Lost Song, as well as also Digimon Cy uh, Story Cyber Sleuth. Tongue twisted there. <laughs> but those games in particular from Bandai Namco, I had a chance to talk to both producers of both of those games. They were Japanese developers, Japanese producers that had flown into New York Comic Con for the first time. It was their first time ever coming to New York Comic Con. And I had a chance to talk about the, uh, was talk with them about their respective games. You can find those videos right now on the channel and also check out some extra content included with those interviews over on thecoalition.com. Again, the links are in the description box below for you guys to check out. A lot of interesting stuff with those games, and I was really intrigued with some of the stuff that I found out about with uh, Sword Art Online Lost Song. I had a chance to actually play the game, and it was felt a little bit different than the previous Sword Art Online game, Reef Hollow Fragment, that I reviewed on The Coalition not too long ago. So that game is looking interesting. Digimon as well. A lot of you Digimon fans out there are going to like some of the nuances and the new types of gameplay elements that they're implementing into this game for the PlayStation 4. is very 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 cool besides all that i know i'm going a little bit long here so bear with me there's a lot of games to talk about so with bandai namco as well i also got a chance to check out project cross zone as well as also dragon ball z extreme Botoden for the nintendo 3ds Project Cross Zone was awesome because not only did I get the chance to see a little bit more than what I saw at E3 this past June, but I also got a chance to see Segata Sanchiro as an actual assist character in the game, which was great, and that was awesome, and I was really happy. Put a big smile on my face because I'm a fan of that guy. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, with Dragon Ball Z Extreme Batoden, the game plays very similar to Marvel vs. Capcom 1. If you guys ever played that game extensively, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you guys out there that have, you'll notice that when you check out some of the footage of the game, or if you ever had hands-on time with it, if maybe you were at New York Comic Con, the game controls very similar to that, where you have a bunch of different characters that you could have either controlled characters that you could play as like Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, etc., but also some of the other side characters that aren't necessarily the Z fighters that make appearance and actually help in a, uh, either assist or do damage to your opponent throughout the course of the actual fight. You have a ton of characters to choose from, again, playable or non-playable as a support, to be included in your roster during the course of the matchup. Very, very fun and interesting to actually check out. They have some fighters and some nods to some of the more recent movies and series for Dragon Ball Z, including, uh, what is it, Battle of the Gods, as well as also Resurrection F. So you'll definitely be getting your Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan in this game, which is absolutely insane. I still hate that name anyway, but I digress. I got a, so got a chance to check out the new Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, which was very cool. Again, I checked it out at E3, and there was a couple little more extra things included in this demo. There's a big roster that's going to be coming for the game. Feels very, very similar to Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution, but with some more tweaks and much more better stuff included for the game. And pretty much, in my opinion, a lot of the cinematics for some of the attacks feel very, much more epic than in the previous game. So a lot of you guys that are Naruto fans are going to be very pleased about that. Moving on from there, let's talk about Capcom. Capcom had a lot to show this time around. Not only did they have Mega Man Legacy Collection on display, which you can check out my review of that game over on thecoalition.com, as well as some of the videos I did here on the channel, but they brought with them Street Fighter V and some Resident Evil games. Got a chance to check out Resident Evil Zero, which is the remake, the HD remake for the PlayStation 4 system, as well as Xbox One, I believe, also. But that game is going to be packed up with the original Resident Evil in, on disc that you could buy in stores, or you could buy it a single and alone, uh, just Resident Evil Zero, via digital download only. So definitely check that out. But the game that I want to talk about is Umbrella Corpse. Umbrella Corpse is a unique take on the Resident Evil formula, where a lot of people will draw comparisons to Operation Raccoon City, but the game is completely different than that game altogether. Number one, it's not bad. It doesn't control like garbage or anything like that. But also, this takes a much more competitive gaming type of approach to the format that was once established in Operation Raccoon City. It's more, more focused on multiplayer matchups where it's 3v3, and you're actually trying to do kind of like a search and destroy format where you have to eliminate, eliminate, eliminate the other opposing team, tongue twisted again, eh. <laughs> 
where you pretty much have to frag the entire team that you're going up against whatnot, while at the same time dealing with all the zombies and the different types of monsters that are included on the map while you're actually doing, uh, in, uh, fighting on the matchup. The maps themselves are very, very uh, claustrophobic, very small, so you're going to be running into the enemy a lot more often than not. You don't have to worry about getting lost in all the zombies and such in larger maps, you know, here and there. The game is really emphasized on being much more niche, much more competitive multiplayer-esque, and much more faster and a lot more quicker in kind of the things, the action happening than most other games that are included in that genre. So, it was cool to play. I played a couple matchups with it, and I really liked what I saw. One of the things that was very clear, though, to me, because after speaking with a Capcom rep that was helping me throughout the entirety of the demo was that this game is not going to have a lot of ties to the main canon of the Resident Evil universe. It takes place in the Resident Evil universe, but don't expect to see Leon Kennedy or Ada Wong or Jill Valentine to actually show up in any sort, uh, form or fashion throughout the entirety of this game. Unlike in Operation Raccoon City where you were able to see those characters or maybe do missions with those characters or against those characters, you won't have any of that in Umbrella Corps. It's a completely different offshoot of the series. You know, it's set, set in the same universe, but its own complete entity, which is interesting. Finally also, Street Fighter V, I had a chance to not only go to the panel which included Yoshiro Ono, Ono-san, I finally got to see him again, I got a cool little keychain from him which he was throwing to the crowd which was great, <laughs> but I also got a chance to play the game again as well, you know, outside from what I played at E3 this past year, I also had a chance to play with some of the newer characters that they actually announced over the course of the weekend. The Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighter Laura, who everybody was losing their minds over, was finally playable for the first time here in North America at New York Comic Con. I got a chance to play a bunch of matches with her. Very interesting character. Uh, she has a lot of different stuff that not only she's a grappler, but she also has a projectile that could be kind of manipulated in a couple different ways based on the type of punch that she actually used to actually execute the special move input. But she was very interesting. She has her own unique personality. Very, very cool to control. A lot of interesting stuff's going to come out from her during the competitive circuit when players start playing in tournaments with her. But in addition to that, I got the chance to play with Armika as well as Karen, who I thought was like the best technical fighter of all the characters I actually played with. And I really think a lot of competitive guys are going to pick her up. But I also got to play with Zangief. Zangief has an air SPD, which I think is awesome. A lot of characters that are grapplers have air grabs where they just use a regular grab input when they jump up into the air to throw their opponents down. But Zangief has an air 360 motion, which I think is very cool. It's going to be interesting to see how he actually, you know, plays out on the competitive circuit for Street Fighter V. So we're getting another demo for the game very, very soon. Another beta, I should say. And there's going to be different characters that you're going to be able to play with when you actually download the demo and actually play it. So can't wait to actually check that out at some point. Besides that, finally, let's talk about Square Enix again. Let's talk about some of these Japanese titles that I actually got to play. I got to play Final Fantasy Explorers over at the Square Enix booth, and I was very pleased with it. Again, it has the same type of formula, very similar to Monster Hunter or Tokiden or any of those games within that same type of genre of style of game. But a lot of the Final Fantasy characteristics and tropes and kind of like unique parts to them, those previous games, are implemented into the formula, and it makes it feel very unique amongst the rest of the actual genre. You get are actually not fighting, well, you know, basic monsters that like what you find in Monster Hunter. You're actually fighting the summons from the Final Fantasy universe. So you get to fight characters like Ifrit, Shiva, possibly Odin, etc. I know I talked with the rep during my time with the demo to try to see if there was any other like you know well-known summons that will make an appearance in the game and they assured me that there would be they couldn't name any outright but i'm pretty sure we could expect guys like bahamut like alexander rama etc to actually be included in the game which will be very awesome i'm actually curious to see if they'll maybe include uh, summons like anima from final fantasy 10 or any other like crazy summons like knights of the round or something to actually see if we could actually fight those different types of monsters with our friends the game speaking of which the game actually includes four-player co-op, much like Monster Hunter. Again, you'll be able to actually team up with a couple of your buddies, or if you're going solo, you have the ability to have three other minions actually go on an actual hunt, quote-unquote, with you that are different Final Fantasy monsters. You can actually capture some of the lower, kind of like, you know, weaker monsters that are roaming around on maps and actually turn them into allies. So in my actual time with the demo, I actually had an actual Chocobo with me, a Thornberry, and a Moogle while I was actually running around trying to actually find and kill Ifrit during my time with the demo. Very cool, the level design was really interesting. With Ifrit, I was in a much more lava type of like fiery setting, which is much more appropriate, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be other maps much more fine-tuned to the different summons that you're actually gonna be taking on. 
They have a little nod to some pla uh, classic Final Fantasy titles and past Final Fantasy titles where your limit break turns you into one of the legacy characters, kind of like Cloud, uh, Lightning, as well as Squall, and actually allows you to do powerful attacks in order to damage the summons that actually, you're actually trying to hunt. In my time, I actually transformed into Squall for obvious reasons, a big FF8 fan, which is very cool. And I got to do all different types of little attacks that were different from the class I actually chose. You get to choose a bunch of different class types for your character, again, including Dragoon, Black Mage, Warrior, White Mage, all the types of classic Final Fantasy classes you could expect that you maybe have seen in like Final Fantasy Tactics or Final Fantasy V will make an appearance in this game and allow you to uh, an array of like different abilities to contribute during the course of the matchup. So that should be very cool or whatnot. So with that being said, okay, Again, New York Comic Con was very awesome. I was very pleased with a lot of stuff of which I saw. And it was very cool actually checking out a lot of the games and a lot of the different types of stuff that was going on. So, with that being said, guys, I'm going to head out. I will talk to you guys again real soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.